this is an article that has three parts. This is part one. You'll be listening or reading part two later in the week, and then we'll do part three at another time. The title is called, In Online Games, A Path to Youth Customers. This has been adapted from an article by Matt Richtel, printed in the New York Times on April 20th, 2011. Asperia, California. Playing one of her favorite computer games, Leslie Lopez, 10, moves her mouse to click on a cartoon B. She drags and drops it into an empty panel to create her own comic strip. Leslie likes this online game so much that she plays twice a week. She even often emails her creations to her friends. I always send them to my cousin in Los Angeles, she said. But this is not just a game, it is also advertising. Create a Comic, as it is called, was created by General Mills. The purpose is to help it sell Honey Nut Cheerios to children. General Mills and other food companies are rewriting the rules for researching children in the internet age. These companies often sell sugar, cereals, and junk food. To sell their products, they are using multimedia games, online quizzes, and cell phone apps. They hope to build deep ties with young consumers, and children like Leslie are sharing their message through email and social networks. Blurring the line between advertising and entertainment is a source of growing concern for nutrition experts and children's advocates. The Federal Trade Commission has also been studying food marketing to children. The White House Task Force on Childhood Obesity has said one reason so many children are overweight is the way junk food is marketed. Critics say that ads let marketers engage children in a way they cannot on television. Television programming rules limit commercial times during shows for children. The internet has no such regulations in place. These sites and ads are becoming part of children's daily digital journeys. Because they are online, this advertising often flies under the radar of parents and policymakers. Food marketers have tried to reach children for decades, but they've never had so much access to them. They have also never been able to bypass parents so successfully, said Dr. Susan Lin, a psychiatry instructor at Harvard Medical School. Dr. Lin and others point to many studies that link junk food marketing and poor diets. Food industry representatives call the criticism unfair. They say they have become less aggressive in marketing to children. Since 2006, 17 major corporations have taken a voluntary pledge to reduce marketing of their least nutritious brands to children. Some of the companies who took the pledge include General Mills, McDonald's, Pepsi, Coca-Cola, and Burger King. In 2010, they updated the pledge to include marketing on mobile devices. They pledge to only advertise food choices that are better for you to children. Elaine D. Kolish, who organized, whose organization oversees the pledge, states compliance is excellent. She noted that in recent months, companies had shut down several children's sites, including General Mills' popular virtual world, Millsbury. She states other sites have been changed to focus on adults, like those of Kellogg's Pop-Tarts and Pepsi's Cap'n Crunch. And she said General Mills and Post Foods had cut or pledged to cut the amount of sugar in some cereals. Only rarely do these major companies violate their pledges, she said. It's pretty darn infrequent, and it's not willful. Nutrition experts say that the voluntary pledges are full of loopholes. Additionally, better for you is a relative term that allows companies to keep marketing unhealthy options. Even with criticism, the companies have good financial reason to pitch to children. James McNeil, a former marketing professor at Texas A&M University, estimates that children influence more than $100 billion in food and beverages, beverage purchases each year, while well, over half of those purchases are for cold cereal. Children have power over spending in the household. They have power over the grandparents, they have power over the babysitters, and on and on and on, said Professor McNeil. 
all of that is finally being recognized and acknowledged. Some parents, like Leslie Lopez's mother, Toribia Huerta, say the online marketing is making it difficult to improve her children's diets. Ms. Huerta said Leslie and her younger siblings pester her for sugary cereals they see in the games and for snacks like baby bottle pops, a candy with a game site that the girls often visit. They ask me for it constantly. They're hard to resist when they whine, Ms. Huerta said, speaking in Spanish through a translator. She blames her daughter's love of sugar for her many cavities. But Ms. Huerta also said the food site seemed fun and safe. They look like good games for her age. Next, let's go ahead and flip the page and turn to the questions. All right, make sure your name is on the top of this paper as well as the class period. These questions only go with what you've read so far. And the paragraph numbers are listed on the left-hand side of the page, so that'll help you when you need to go back and look to the paragraph. Number one, in paragraph 12, the sentence, only rarely do these major companies violate their pledge, pledges. The word violate means to A, advertise, B, avow, C, break, D, cooperate. Number two, in paragraph 10, Elaine Kolish states, compliance is excellent. An antonym to compliance would be A, acceptance, B, disobedience, C, obedience, D, observance. An antonym for compliance. Number three, Examples of groups concerned about food advertising to children include A, the Federal Trade Commission, B, nutrition experts, C, the White House Task Force on Childhood Obesity, or D, all of the above. I think that you should go back and look in the article to see which of these um, groups were mentioned. Number four. Which statement best supports food industry representatives' claims that they have become less aggressive in marketing to children? Refer back to the passage if needed to get the full context of each statement. Remember, you're looking for proof that they've become less aggressive when marketing to children. A. The companies hope to build deep ties with young consumers. Paragraph 4. B. General Mills and other food companies are rewriting the rules for reaching children in the Internet age. Paragraph 4. C. Television programming rules limit commercial time during shows for children. Paragraph 6. D. Since 2006, 17 major corporations have taken a voluntary pledge to reduce marketing of their least nutritious brands to children. Paragraph 9. Number five, what statement best supports why advertisers continue to market to children despite the criticism? A, food marketers have never been able to bypass parents so successfully, paragraph seven. B, James McNeil estimates that children influence more than $100 billion in food and beverage, beverage purchases each year, paragraph 14. C. Children are hard to resist when they whine. Paragraph 17. D. The food sites seemed fun and safe. They look like good games for her age. Paragraph 17. Number 6. Which statement does not support the central idea of the passage? A. Children are rarely exposed to public service announcements or advertising for healthier foods. B. Marketers also often provide brand-related items that can be downloaded or printed and saved. Example would be brand-related screensavers and wallpaper. C. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention predicts if current trends continue, one in three U.S. adults will have diabetes by the year 2050. D. 
today's children spend more time, 44.5 hours per week, in front of a computer, television, and game screens than any other activity in their lives except sleeping? Which one of these does not support the central idea of this passage? Number seven. According to the passage, one-way television advertising is different from online advertising is A. Parents can more easily say no to their children when they want items advertised on television. B. Television programming has regulations in place regarding advertising to children. C. Television commercials do not market food items to children. D. None of the above. Number eight. In number eight, you are going to use this small passage from the text to answer this question. So let's take a look at the question. Choose the statement that best supports the claim that food marketers have never been able to bypass parents so successfully. So what I would like you to do is in this passage down here, I would like you to underline or highlight or circle the part of the text, so some text evidence that will prove that marketers have never been able to bypass parents so successfully. And the passage that you'll be using to underline, circle, or highlight, um, I'll read it for you right now. Critics say that ads let marketers engage children in a way they cannot on television. Television programming rules limit commercial time during shows for children. The internet has no such regulations in place. These sites and ads are becoming part of children's daily digital journeys. Because they are online, this advertising all often flies under the radar of parents and policymakers. Please underline, circle, or highlight evidence in that text to prove that food marketers have never been able to bypass parents so successfully. And finally, number nine. Which of the following statements would not be an effective counter-argument for food industry representatives accused of marketing to children? So if food industry marketers representatives were accused of marketing to children, which one, which of these could they answer with and which one would not be effective for them to answer with? First one, companies hope to build deep ties with young consumers. Paragraph four, food industry representatives say they be, have become less aggressive in marketing to children. Paragraph eight, since 2006, 17 major corporations have taken a voluntary pledge to reduce marketing of their least nutritious brands to children. Paragraph 9. Companies had to shut down several children's sites. Paragraph 11. Other sites have been changed to focus on adults. Paragraph 11. After you answer this question, you're all finished. Just wait for further instructions from your teacher.